Hi, and welcome back. I'm Kanisha Leggett again with KUMSLT, and today I will be discussing um, a resource binder. Um, my classmates and I got together in order to put together what we considered an important resource binder. We covered many different topics in order to have them readily available for us when we are not only on field work, but also when we are treating in our daily settings. The resource binder that we created has over 26 topics and we each took a topic and then researched it to provide what we thought to be the most pertinent information. We had several topics as I previously stated and to name a few, we had hip precautions, adaptive equipment, fall prevention, diabetic food sources, also spinal cord injuries, edema management, money management, home exercise programs, and DME as well as the adaptive equipment. Now, the way that I would put my binder together would be using a standard clip-in binder. Of course, everybody can make theirs um, as small or as large. The reason I went with this type is because I'll be able to print out and put on the front where it will show my name and it will say my resource binder. Um, and I like this one because you can slip in papers in the front. For me, it's important to kind of make it um, a little bit creative to make it my own. So that's why I chose this standard binder. Along with the handouts, I would be putting my hands out in the protective sheet covers. The reason I like these is because one, it'll protect the information, but also it's easily accessible in case I need to switch out the information, update information, add information, and of course they just clip right in and we can go on. My binder um, is divided into two sections. I primarily treat adults, and so the majority of my information will be for the adult population. However, several of my classmates treat kids, and there were some handouts um, provided for children. One that comes to mind is iPad games for children. So my binder will have an adult section as well as a child section. Separate from the handouts that my binder will contain, it will also contain a list um, of my classmates' telephone numbers and email addresses, as well as what setting they work in. Just because they're a vital source of information, if I get stuck during field work or in the clinic, and I can tap into those resources as well, that may benefit my client. On that list also are several professors that I have and several key therapists that I have worked with throughout my career um, that specialize in various areas. That way, should I come across a patient that I have a question or a concern about, I can always be able to reach out to them and ask questions. Also in my personal binder, as I was putting this together for the first time, I started to think about other things that I've used along my career, things, information that I've provided to my clients along the way. And so what I'm going to do um, over the next several months to continue to update my binder and increase the amount of resources I have in my binder, I plan to add in several sections, um, one being 211 because it provides resources and services in the community um, for lower income families, or it also provides for disability and special needs. So I think that's a great resource. Also, I will be adding in um, Catholic charity information because they also do a lot with the community and helping out as well as Shriners. I will put in a sheet that has my local VFWs as well as my local churches and local food banks. One, because occupational therapy treats the holistic um, 
person with the holistic approach, I feel that it is important that we also have some form of spiritual information. Sometimes clients don't know, they're new to the area, their church closed. Um, so I find that that's um, very important information to have local church information, as well as the fact that churches sometimes, um, especially during this time of COVID, are passing out food and clothing and assisting with rent and transportation. So I think that that's a vital um, resource to have. I already stated that I, of course, I will have in my local food banks, but also for electricity, I will add in a sheet of information for places like Lyheap. And because I work in Sumter Lake, Marion County, I will also have a list of their resources where they assist with light bills um, and heating. Also, I think it's important to have transportation company information because I wanna be able to provide for my clients that may be disabled or we have decided that they are no longer able to drive. Having that information up front will give them a chance to be better prepared. They can have um, several resources to contact to see who has the better prices, who offers discounts based on, you know, being a veteran, based on your age, things of that nature. So I think it's important to add a sheet in there for transportation companies. Also, what I find that I often talk about with my seniors are senior discount days and which store and what days they offer senior discounts and how much the senior discounts are as well as having information for AAA and AARP because those do offer vital resources for my senior population. And as I stated, I'm primarily work with adults. And so that's why I would have that information in my binder. I like also having the additional medical supply stores and the listing of local handyman um, because Again, in the area that I work in, the villages, they have several companies that work strictly for the villages, but because they are residents of the village, they offer them a discount for home modifications, such as grab bars, um, changing out a tub, taking off a shower door, things like that. So I would have that information for my client as a resource as well. And then lastly, the last sheet I might have is what I call a word of mouth sheet. And that would be where I would jot down the name and phone numbers of businesses or handymen or transportation companies that clients I work with have used and have found to be reputable. And I find that when you can say, oh, several clients have used this, then you know that you're providing a good resource to your clients. So that's why I would add what I would call a word of mouth sheet. Um, in. So that would be the basis of my binder. The other little trick that I like um, that I would add into my binder is mine would be like color. I like color and I think changing the color of the sheets um, for me it kind of makes it pop. Um, the various colors give a change letting me know when I'm moving into a different area. I will also put in color tabs if I find that the sheets, the color sheets aren't working for me then I would add in color tabs but right now I wouldn't use color tabs because I like printing out on different color paper. And then of course at the front of the binder would be a um, list of all the resources that I have so there would be a reference there at the front so that I would be able to go right to um, the appendix and see what it is that I'm looking for or if somebody else had to use my binder they would have access to that information. So this is how I would put my well would put this is how I'm putting my resource binder um, together. Of course you make it unique you put in what is viable for not only your setting, but also your area. It's key to know what's available in your area. We did generalized sheets for our class because we're all in different states or different um, counties, 
but it's important that you know what's available in your specific area. That way you can make sure you're providing current and up-to-date information for your client to better serve your population. So I'm Kanisha Leggett with KUMSLT, and that is how to put together a great resource binder. Thanks for joining me. Have a good evening.